extra excited today because I'm just, well, I'm just three videos away from completing all the fifth grade. Oh my goodness on GoMath. Crazy! Yes, it's only taken me like, ooh, like nine years. I mean, it's been a while. It seems like I've been doing them forever. Anyway, and you know what? I wouldn't have gotten this far, to be honest with you, if I haven't had the great fan club out there. You guys are awesome. I mean, really awesome. So much so that recently somebody sent me a message and I wanted to do just kind of like a quick shout out. I've never done that before, but I want to do a big shout out because one of you loyal fifth graders told me a joke. Said, what is an astronaut's favorite key on the keyboard? I don't know. I really couldn't think of it until. Yes. It's the space bar. <laughs> get it? Yeah. Uh, well, unless, of course, you get in, like, big trouble or something. Like your spaceship's going to smash into a planet. You might want to use a escape key. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Hey, that's my best at humor right now for right now for the beginning of this video. Let's get started, my friends. Come on. You're supposed to be teaching math, Mr. Wara. I know. So let's start. Here we have a lesson. Lesson. Blah, blah, blah. We have lesson 11.8. And it says that the topic today is going to be volume of rectangular prisms. Cool. All right. I like that. But we can't do that without our essential question. What we hope to learn through this lesson, and it is, how can you find the volume of a rectangular prism? Oh, my goodness. It's just like the topic. I know. It's almost like the same thing. So we're going to learn how to do that today. Cool. But first, we have to look at our connect. It says the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. You know that area is measured in square units or units squared and that the area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length and the width. However, volume is measured in cubic units or units cubed. When you build a prism and add each layer of cubes, you are adding a third dimension, height. Wow, very cool. Yes, you know, you may recall that we did area, right, back in the day, probably like in second grade. No, just kidding, probably like fourth grade maybe. Anyway, and it says there the area of the base here, and we actually have a picture that we need to determine the area. Well, if the area is just length times width, it's just a two-dimensional figure. You can see that's just a plane there, although it looks like really 3D here. But it's really just we have three, and then and it's basically three, I would say, is the width. And then the length would be, it looks like one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. So we actually have an area of this particular base is going to be three times four, or we'll say 12 square units. Okay, so that's a, definitely something that we need to keep in mind that area really has to do with two dimensions, just length and width. But volume, we're learning, is when you build that base layers on top of that base. So we're going to find that out right now. But we can't do any of that, you know. Of course we can't. We just can't. Yes, you can, Mr. War. No, we can't. Unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. That's right. Now, real world problem says that you won, built the rectangular prism shown at the right using one inch cubes. Camera on. Cameraman. Thank you. Woo. Okay. There you go. Oh, wow, very cool. I see layers. Ooh, I see a layer of 12. Just like up above, we had that 12, that, and now we have layers of 12. Cool. Okay. Back to the problem. Thank you. Okay. The prism has a base that is a rectangle and has a height of four cubes. What is the volume of the rectangular prism that you want built? Okay. It says you can find the volume of a prism in cubic units by multiplying the number of square units in the base shape by the number of layers or its height. So we're learning that these two words are synonymous. That's right. Layers kind of means height. Okay. When we keep going up layers. Yeah. You know, it's like when you get that, like a three layer cake or something, you know, that has ice cream in the middle. And it's just like, you got that one layer. Then you got another layer of like some fudge, another layer of some chocolate. And, oh, sorry. I just really like, I have a sweet tooth, my friends. Anyway, it says that each layer of Yuan's rectangular prism is composed of blank inch cubes. Well, we already know that. We can see that from the picture. We know that, that base layer was 12 inch cubes. Here we go. I know. Do you like how I wrote right on the line? 
<laughs> okay, so now we have, what do we have here? Okay, we do have a table. Looks like we have height in layers. We have volume, that's in cubic inches. That's the unit of measure. So you can see in the very first layer, it corresponds with the 12 cubic inches. And when we have another layer, we have 24. Hmm, gee, let's see, one times 12 is 12, two times 12 is 24. Hmm, do I notice a pattern? I do. Yes, it's a really easy pattern. It's just three times by 12, which is going to give me 36. And then four times 12 is gonna give me 48. Ooh, how I love math. Multiply the height by 12. Oh my goodness, this lesson is so easy. I know you guys are thinking, you know, Mr. War, you're making this seem harder than it is. I don't mean to, it's just super easy. It's just, we're moving on from fourth grade and we're in fifth grade now and we're like learning how to see something in 3D. Something to reminder, I know I've mentioned this in another video, but volume just refers to that space that it occupies, you know, that space. And we're just going up now. It's like a big, tall, like, you know, skyscraper. But let's get on with the math. Now we have, how does the volume change as each layer is added? Okay, seems like pretty easy. Well, as each layer is added, the volume's going to increase. So I'm just gonna put the volume will increase in fact, by 12, as a matter of fact, 12 cubic, 12 cubic units, or, oh, I'm sorry, we're not actually even using units, they already said inches. Oops, sorry, can I draw a line to that? Okay, and now we have cubic inches. That was so much fun. Yes, the volume will increase by 12 cubic inches. Oh, for every, for every layer, okay? That's the key thing we learned about layers, right? And I bet this mathematical practice over here will probably talk about that. Let's see. It says, look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. This is one of the mathematical practices. I don't remember which one. But it says here, it says, I can notice when calculations are repeated. And in a sense, this is a perfect example of that because we have these layers. And it's repeated by 12 being added to each layer as we're doing volume, okay? It also says what, then I can find more efficient methods and shortcuts. Sorry, time for you to go. Say bye. Hey, you actually said bye. Oh, this is just spooky. Scary. Okay, now we move on to our problem. Okay, it says, what does the number you multiply the height by represent? Okay, I need to think of this again. What does the number you multiply the height? Oh, that's like that's like the uh, the area we were talking about. It's the area the area of the base of the prism, okay? The area of the base of the prism or layer. We talked about that too. It's like the layer. So we have that first layer. So that's the number. The number, whatever that is, some number, we're going to multiply it by the height, okay? Which ultimately gives us the V or the volume. Okay, I'm just writing this in there for fun because I love to write. So that's what we're saying here. So this is almost like the area times the height, which is the layer, okay? That's, we think of that as a layer, that's the height going up. Up, up, up and away, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so the volume of Yuan's rectangular prism is, well, we already determined it was four, was 48 inches, and the key word there is cubed. That's right, although that looks like cabbed. Oh, Mr. Wara, why'd you do that? Oh, try again. Cubed, much better. You are the winner. Sorry, you know what that means. You're the uh, the big L. Oh no, you didn't win. You're the non-winner. <laughs> anyway, let's get serious, Mr. Wara. Okay, serious it is. Page master. Woo! Yeehaw, we're already on the second page. Yeah. Now it says relate height to volume. Okay? Relate. Think of how they're related. Height to volume. Doo -doo. Okay, I'm gonna relate you guys. It says Tony stacks cube shaped beads that measure one centimeter on each edge in a storage box. The box can hold six layers of 24 beads with no gaps or overlaps. And of course, this is pretty crucial, right? They have to fit in there kind of like exactly. What is the volume of Tony's storage box? So this volume is going to equal something. We need to figure out what that is. That's our goal. Now, what information do we have? It does say, what are the dimensions of the base of the box. Do we know what that is? Well, thinking about this problem, I'm kind of thinking the dimensions have to be 
four centimeters by six centimeters. Because what we're saying here is we have one centimeter on each edge in the storage box, but the box holds six layers. And it says six layers of actual 24 beads. So we know that we have 24 beads, and this must be the box here. Aha. Come on down here, camera guy. Yeah, because here we have one, two, three, four, five, six by, and then we have one, two, three, four. Okay. I didn't realize this went to that box, okay? I didn't look ahead because I was thinking to myself that it could also be eight centimeters by three centimeters because that would also give you a layer of 24 beads. But now that I see this box is actually here, I'm gonna say, okay, no. Anyways, it does say that the box can hold six layers of 24 beads. So what is the volume of Tony's storage box? Well, first it says, here it says, what operation can you use to find the area of the base shape? Well, that's clearly gonna be multiplication because that's what I just did. That's how I was trying to solve the problem for thinking, yeah, it could be four by six. Well, I was thinking it might be eight by three. Now, just say one way, use base and height. All right, so the volume of each bead is, so that was one cubic centimeter or one centimeter cubed. The storage box has a base with an area of, we already determined that, that was 24 centimeters squared. Okay, that was at six by four. The height of the storage box is, we already know that, the height of it is just six straight centimeters. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, and six, that one there. So this here is six centimeters high. It also means that we have that many layers, two, three, four, five, six, means the same thing. The volume of the storage box is, and here's our base area, we already know it's 24. We're gonna multiply that by the six, giving us, what is 24 times six? Ooh, we have four, carry the two, 12. We have 144 cubic centimeters. Okay, so rather than try to count every one of those little cubes in there, this gives us the answer by doing that. Woo-hoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it says another way. Use length, width, and height. Well, we didn't do that up above, right? What we did up above was we were just finding the kind of the area. They were letting us know what the layer was, right? And that layer was really equal to the area of that figure. And so they told us that the layer itself was 24. Do you remember that? So that's how we knew that that was the, the area. They, they have these all separated now. You know that the area of the base of the storage box is 24 square centimeters, and that's what we actually just said. The base has a length of six, then the width of four centimeters. The height is six centimeters. So the volume of the storage box is the base area, which was four times six, times six centimeters high, or, oh, I see they put these in parentheses. I'm trying to figure out what do I do? Okay, so, or 24, right, times six, or 144 cubic centimeters. So the volume of the storage box is 144. Whew, okay, kind of doozy the problem. So I'm so used to teaching volume as just length times width times height, and that is the formula for volume. Something you're going to need to have for the state test, I am sure. Okay, three dimensions. It's a three-dimensional figure. They're having us break it apart in a couple different ways. Looking at just concentrating on the base layer and then learning volume through that, which is a great idea. Finally, it says, think smarter. Okay, what if each cube-shaped bead measured two centimeters on each edge? Oh, instead of the one, remember? Up above, it was only one centimeter on each edge. How would the dimensions of the storage box change? The word's dimension. For in, it, me, dimension is like a measurement, okay? A measurement for length and width. That was like that 2D we consider, but we say each one's a dimension. And then we added on height, which gave us three dimensions, like three measurements we have to make. Anyway, how would the volume change? Well, the volume is definitely gonna change. It's gonna change by, well, two times as great for each dimension. If you crop above here, we had the four times six, times six, giving us the 144. But we're actually, they're talking about there being double the measurement for each edge. That means you're really saying that it's gonna double for each one of them, two times two times two greater. Giving us, if you look down here below, that's gonna be eight times 12 times 12. And I'm just showing you the multiplication of this to this. 
because they said, what if it were to increase to two centimeters on each edge? I'm just showing you what would it change into. The four is going to change into the eight, the six into the 12, the six into the 12. It's going to be a lot larger. My goodness, we could do the math on here. This is 144, because we already know what 12 times 12 is, times eight, okay? That was that. Well, it's going to be a huge number now. Two, three, 32, that's going to be 35. Eight, yeah, now it turns out to be 1,152 cubic centimeters. So it increased big time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if I answered all the questions. Let me go back. Because sometimes Mr. Warren just goes off the deep end. How would the dimensions of the storage box change? We said it would double. Okay. Definitely double for sure. Then what else we had? How would the volume change? Well, if each dimension is going to have a doubling effect by two, then we know that the volume also um, but it's actually, you know what, it's even, it, the, I can't see, no, the volume's not, each dimension is doubling. However, if we look at the, the volume for the first numbers and the volume, that's not double because 144 times two is not double. So it's, it actually increased by, by eight, it's eight times, okay? 144 became eight times greater, okay? I'm not trying to confuse you here with this problem. I'm just kind of teaching this. It's just thinking smarter. So I just kind of want to, I know my work's kind of all over the place. I guess I should have some words of a statement. So I think probably the biggest thing just to make sure that we get out of this is that we read this carefully. So each length, because these lengths here were, were, were only four by six by six. So now the lengths are going to be twice as long. Okay. And then also that means that these are the, going to be the new dimensions here. 8 by 12 by 12, which we already determined is 144 times 8. So when you really look at it, yeah, the volume, I'll just write this down, but I've already said it. The volume will increase by 8 times. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, what? What, I went over? Oh, they're trying to say I went over? <sighs> like that, I guess the bumper music dude was like, come on, Mr. War, we want to get the music going. Let's get you out of here. My friends, thank you so much for coming along on this wonderful journey of fifth grade math. Yeah.